Good morning, and a very warm welcome to you all to our uh, morning service today. Um, today is the fifth Sunday of Lent, uh, which is sometimes called Passion Sunday. So I want to just read a couple of verses uh, from John's Gospel before we begin. Then Jesus cried out, Whoever believes in me does not believe in me only, but in the one who sent me. The one who looks at me is seeing the one who sent me. I have come into the world as a light, so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. Well, it's great that we can meet in the light of Jesus Christ and trust in him this morning. So would you please stand? O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving power among the nations. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, your only son was lifted up, that he might draw the whole world to himself. May we walk this day in the way of the cross and always be ready to share its weight, declaring your love for the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. And so our opening hymn, Jesus Calls Us, continues our theme of discipleship. Let's sing this together. Please be seated, and in our first Bible reading, we continue to follow through Isaiah 52 and 53. The first reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verses 4 to 6, and can be found on page 741 of the Pew Bibles. That's Isaiah, chapter 53, on page 741. <clears throat> Surely he took our pain and bore our suffering. 
yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, however uh, familiar those words are to you, um, let's just take a moment, um, just in quietness, to think on what we've just heard read. That Jesus took up our pain, was pierced for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. That we have been brought peace by the punishment that he faced. We have been healed. And it is because day by day, like sheep we go astray, that the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. St. Peter wrote, Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sin, we might live for righteousness. So let us come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden to ask for his forgiveness and peace. We pray together. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. And the collect for Passion Sunday. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And in our uh, focus on discipleship um, this term, this morning, we're going to be looking at the place of prayer in our Christian lives. And so our next hymn picks up that theme, Lord, teach us how to pray aright. Please stand and we sing this together.
please be seated. The second reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 5 to 13, and can be found on page 970 of the Pew Bible. That's Matthew, chapter 6, on page 970. <clears throat> and when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room. Close the door and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, do please stand and let's declare our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Do please be seated. to adjust the stand, I'll just hide behind, or more behind it. Ooh. It helps if I have my Bible the right way up. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just ask that you'll be with us now and that we may hear what you want us to know, that you will teach us and guide us through these words, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Prayer. We can seek God's help in prayer. And for those of you who've heard me preach before, you might think I have a thing about prayer. Or I might be a prayer warrior or something. Because this is the third time that I have preached on prayer here at Rothley. I'm not a prayer warrior, by the way. But prayer, I know, is so important. It's because it's the way that we communicate with God, our Heavenly Father. We have a friend, Sue and I, a lady called Jane Holloway. 
Now grab this for a title. She is the National Prayer Director at the World Prayer Centre. Not bad, eh? Jane, as you can imagine, is passionate about prayer, making it accessible to all, and sees, uh, seeing the church rediscover the centrality of prayer in its mission. Her role enables her to teach, mobilise, write, and network across the British Isles and the rest of the world. She has written a book called Prayer for Amateurs, and here's my copy of it. Nice little read, but she's written a book called Prayer for Amateurs. But why use the word amateur? Firstly, it suggests it's for people who know that they're not very good at praying and need some help. That's why I bought it. I did buy it, I didn't get a free copy. Secondly, amateur comes from a Latin word that means lovers. It's written for people who love God and want to develop their relationship with God. If anybody would like to borrow this, I will let you borrow it, but I will take your name so I get it back. To help us develop this relationship, Jesus left us with one prayer. And that one prayer, which is therefore usually called the Lord's Prayer, when the disciples implored him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples, that's in Luke chapter 11, verse 1, he gave them this prayer, the Lord's Prayer, known to us from childhood, which we had for, for our reading, but from the Matthew version. It's the same, but it's the Matthew version. I find it fascinating as well that the disciples needed to be taught to pray. Maybe because when Jesus prayed, he withdrew to a quiet place. In Matthew 14, verse 23, after he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. And in Luke chapter 6, verse 16, but Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. The Lord's Prayer has been prayed without interruption for over 2,000 years. At every moment of every day, somewhere on the earth, people are saying these very words that were once spoken by Christ to his disciples. This is why we have no better path to the very heart of Christianity than by this short and first observation, simple prayer. But let me begin this explanation by saying directly that its meaning is, is inexhaustible that it is impossible to give this prayer one final and conclusive explanation. As with the Gospel, the Lord's Prayer is always addressed to each one of us personally and you. He said, this is how you should pray. This makes it seem to have been composed specifically for each one of us and for our needs, for our questions, for our pilgrim life. Yet at the same time, it remains an internal and unchanging in its essence, always calling us to what is most important, fellowship with our Creator, our Father in Heaven. Jesus tells us what not to do when we pray. Don't make a great show of it, or, or keep babbling on. In other words, keep it simple, keep it to the point. When I was <clears throat> 50 years younger, we had a mission at our church, some students from some college called Wycliffe Hall, not Rob, came to our church on a mission, and we had one of them stay with us. I can use his real name, John. He came to stay with us. And he asked us about people he was going to go and visit. Well, Sunday lunch was going to be at George's house. George 
was one of the readers at the church. And when he told me, he said, I'm going to George Smith, we'll call him, for lunch. I says, oh, I hope it's salad. And he goes, why? He says, grace will be long. And he goes, he won't, will it? I said, could be. That afternoon, John came back. And he slumped in the armchair. And he said, it was salad for lunch. And grace lasted 30 minutes. 30 minutes. I felt sorry for George's two small boys. There they are, looking at all this food and waiting. He went on and on, and John just could not see the point of it. Evidently, George hadn't read this bit of Matthew's Gospel. Don't keep babbling on. So prayer is essentially a relationship with God. Prayer is our way of having a conversation between us and God. Like all relationships, it must be worked on. God wants us to talk and listen to him. He wants us to to build us up by daily contact. Honest talking and sharing our lives with him. We pray to God through Jesus. Jesus taught his disciples that they should ask the Father in his name. John chapter 14. We do this as an acknowledgement that through Jesus we have access to the Father. Praying is like a phone call. Remember the days when you made a phone call and you rang up the operator and asked to be put through to the number you wanted? Today we can just direct dial. We can just call the number we want and there we are, we're through. We will never, when we pray, if you think of prayer as a phone call, we will never get the engaged or number unobtainable number. We don't need different numbers for our inquiries. If your prayer is for health, press one. If it's for financial requests, press two. If it's for world peace, press three, etc., etc., etc. All our prayers go to the same person at the same time, our Father in heaven, when we pray in the name of Jesus. Our first instruction that Jesus gives us in verse 6 of our reading is to withdraw to a quiet place. How many of us have got quiet places not many right I do because my wife goes to work Charles Wesley's mother Susanna promised the Lord that for every hour she spent in entertainment she would give to him an hour of prayer and reading now she struggled to find a secret place because said Mrs. Susanna Wesley, had 10 children. She actually gave birth to 19, but only 10 survived. So there's this poor woman, not in a very big house, wanting some peace and quiet. And how did she do that? She gave the children one simple instruction. When I put my apron over my head, I must not be disturbed. I would love to go around to a house and see somebody sitting in a chair with an apron over their head because then I go, I know what you're doing. She was so devoted that in the end she didn't devote one hour a day. She devoted two hours a day hiding under her apron. I would do that when my, I'm going to try that trick when my grandchildren come around, put on my McDonald's apron and hide under it. So, but that is an example of how we must exercise some effort to enter into a framework of prayer. We must all joy find a way of getting into that state of spirit and mind in which this prayer, of all prayers, begins to sound, to resonate with us, and is 
revealed in all its full meaning and becomes for each of us one thing needed, food for our very daily being. So this morning, we'll begin to explore this prayer. And let's start with a greeting, which at the same time both an appeal and an affirmation. Our Father. The first thing Jesus offers to those who ask him to teach them to pray is the very first thing he leaves them as a priceless gift of, and consolation, as joy in the Spirit is the possibility of calling God Father, to regard him as their Father. How many ideas have evolved in our imagination about God? He has been referred to as the absolute Lord, omnipotent creator, God, and so on, and so on. Each of these ideas and designations relate to some element of truth, to a profound experience and a depth of understanding. Yet this one word, Father, together with the word, Our, contains all these concepts yet at the same time revealing them as a relationship with God, as intimacy, as love, as unique and repeatable, and a joyful union. Our Father. Here we find the meaning of love and the answer to love. Here lies the experience of intimacy and the joy of this experience. Here faith opens it into trust and dependence yields to freedom, which ultimately unfolds as pure joy. This is no longer an idea about God, but already knowledge of God. This is already communion with him in love and unity and trust. This is already the beginning of us knowing eternity. For Christ himself said to the Father, for this is eternal love, like eternal life, that they would know you. John chapter 17. This greeting is therefore not only the beginning, but the very foundation of the prayer. It renders all other petitions possible and fills them with meaning. In its deepest and original sense, Christianity is a religion of a personal relationship with God which means that it's not founded on intellectual ideas or philosophical deductions, but on the experience of love which floods our whole life, the experience of personal love. We then say, hallowed be your name. What we are saying here is, God, you alone are holy, and acknowledge that this is how we should reflect God in our everyday lives. Your kingdom come. Through prayer, the kingdom of God is coming. If we don't pray that his kingdom will come, how do we expect the church of God to increase? We hear many stories of churches in the third world praying for his kingdom to come and are seeing it grow in some places at speed. Then we come to a line that some find hard. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus himself prayed these very words on the night before his crucifixion. In doing so, he submitted to God's plan. So in praying, your will be done, is to submit to whatever God has chosen for us to do. Give us today our daily bread. A little further along in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus instructs us not to worry about our life, what we will eat or drink, or what we should wear. But if we f seek first the kingdom of God, all that we need will be provided by our Heavenly Father, because he knows our needs and he loves us. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Debtors here doesn't mean forgive us for not paying a monetary debt, 
but forgive us for not loving God as we ought, for not being obedient to his call on our lives. But by asking for forgiveness, we can restore our sense of closeness to God. It also reminds us that God's mercy is meant to overflow out of us to others. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Sometimes God allows us to be tempted, but to be tempted by the evil that is surrounding us, but not beyond what we can cope with. We should pray to be delivered from these trying times. All Christians struggle with temptation. Sometimes it can be so subtle that we don't even realize it is happening to us. So in this sentence, it's asking God to help us recognize temptation and to give us the strength to overcome it. Praying should be as important as breathing. We need to do it regularly each day. Be it short prayers, simple prayers, eloquent prayers, and times of quiet listening to God to speak to us. We can pray at any time and in any place, and we should be seeking God's help daily in all the things we do. Lord, help me with my conversations. Help me with my work. Help me look after my family and friends. So if you, so if you can, at some point in your day, try and find a quiet space. Say the Lord's Prayer to yourself. Pause between each line and enjoy the gift we have been given to talk to our Heavenly Father and ask for his help. Amen. Well, our next hymn is uh, one that's probably very familiar to us from maybe from our childhood, maybe from school assemblies and whatever. Um, but it does uh, simply uh, ask us to focus on knowing our Father and trusting him in all circumstances of life, keeping in that relationship with our Father. So do please stand and let's sing this together. Do please be seated, and in a moment Liz is going to come and uh, lead us in our prayers. Um, but before that, those of you that have already read the fellowship post, will, and you're aware we have a focus on one of our mission agencies uh, each week, um, and this week you'll have seen a brief update from Tear Fund. 
And uh, what we've received from the, uh, them this week is not just, um, oh, these are the things we really want you to pray for and, and so on and so forth, but actually just a word of thanks um, for our support and for the support of all those who give and pray for the work of Tear Fund. Now, I'm well aware that uh, the print they use on these slides, you probably can't read. So let me just read this quickly. So please pray with us, giving thanks for the work that took place in 2023 and the impact it had on people's lives and communities. Give thanks for the local churches around the world working to transform their communities. We pray that God will continue to strengthen them for good works and to pray for Tear Fund's work in the coming year, the more communities and lives will be transformed. So very much to give thanks for the work that Tear Fund is doing. And uh, they, they produce, um, as it were, a daily prayer diary as well, which anyone online, you can just sign up for it and just get a little prayer pointer each day from Tear Fund. Uh, today, it, f it focused on, on the work they're doing in Yemen. We often pray for Yemen. Well, Tear Fund are there uh, doing work, trying to bring hope in a very troubled area like that. So there's just a very short, a little two-minute video, um, which Ray's going to pray. Uh, Ray's going to pray. Ray's going to play. Um, and then Liz is going to lead us in our prayers, not in our play. Yeah, okay, I'll get those the right way around. Ray to play. Liz to pray. Great. <laughs> Last year, your faithful giving and prayers brought help, brought hope, and much-needed compassion in a challenging year. Your support achieved incredible things. By sharing the love of Jesus across the world, you helped people lift themselves out of poverty and envisioned local churches to set whole communities free. Thank you. In 2023, your support trained 7,321 people to deliver community transformation work through local churches. Enabled 6,180 more local churches to start transforming their communities. Helped 468,000 511 people hit by disasters and emergencies, including in Ukraine, Syria, Afghanistan, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Provided sustainable energy, environmental training, or green jobs to 246,186 people envisioned 347,344 people through peace building work and training to prevent violence against women and girls. Thank you for everything you've made possible this year. Your support makes a huge difference to people living in some of the most challenging places on earth. Poverty is not God's plan. It is amazing that God has adopted us into his family that he is our father and we are his children and that he asks us to pray to him not just for ourselves and the church but for leaders, our community, indeed the whole world. So join with me now in prayer and when I say in your name Lord Jesus please respond with we pray. 
Father, it is wonderful that we can call you Father. Thank you for adopting us into your family. Thank you for watching over us, for listening to us and to our concerns. Thank you for providing for us and answering our prayers. It should be the easiest thing in the world to pray, and yet often we struggle. Help us to pray. Teach us. Show us how to pray and what to pray for. Let it be a joy rather than a burden. When it is a burden, help us not to be weighed down further by guilt. In your name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, Easter is approaching and our ministry team is preparing for many services. Some of reflection, some of thanks and praise. Others in our church are preparing for the Easter Holiday Club. We ask you to be with them all. Let your Holy Spirit guide and enable them and bless them in their work. We pray for the church Easter cards, that they would be ready when needed and would be delivered out to all the homes in the village. We pray for opportunities to chat and make new friends. And let us not be afraid or stuck for words in sharing the good news of Jesus. In your name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Father God, as we approach Easter, Muslims are fasting during Ramadan and Jews prepare for the Passover. We ask that this will not lead to heightened tension and violence, but rather that there will be opportunities to speak. We pray that you would speak when we are unable to in visions and in dreams. We pray for the women and children recently abducted from two schools and a camp in Nigeria. Keep them safe, strengthen their faith, return them home, soften the hearts of their captors. In your name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Father, we thank you for the work of Tear Fund and its mission partners. We thank you that across the world they share the love of Jesus and help people to lift themselves out of poverty. Continue to encourage them and to prosper their work and encourage us in our giving and in our prayers for them. In your name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, there are many among us, some that we know about, others we do not, who are suffering and in distress because of financial difficulties, breakdowns in family relationships, physical and min mental ill health and bereavement. Uphold them in your loving care. Comfort them. Give them strength. 
let them find healing and joy in you. In your name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. So, let us join together in saying the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, a few um, things to draw to your attention. Um, firstly, uh, this Sunday evening, um, our choir are uh, singing uh, for us something called Hail Glorious King, uh, written by John uh, Peterson. It's an interspersion of um, items, parts of the narrative of the Passion, the choir sing, with parts of the scriptures uh, being read. Um, great thing to invite some of your friends or family to come along to. Um, that's six o'clock uh, this evening here in church. Uh, on Wednesday evening this week is the last of our Lent course, um, which David Wilson will be leading at 7.30. And uh, then uh, the following week, after Palm Sunday, is Holy Week. And um, there is something every evening during Holy Week um, here in church at 7.30. So on uh, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, Malcolm, uh, David Salt and Torav are uh, taking us through um, uh, John chapter 18 and 19. On um, Monday, Thursday, we'll have our informal communion at the front here. And on a Good Friday evening, we have a service of passion readings and music. So that's all at 7.30 uh, throughout uh, Holy Week. Um, in the um, fellowship post, there's um, a couple of requests from Liz asking for people willing to give uh, some time. Um, firstly, for the uh, holiday club, we're running for children on the Tuesday of Holy Week. So if you're able to give any time to either helping making refreshments or tidying things up a bit um, on Tuesday, uh, that's Tuesday the 26th, um, that would be gratefully received. Um, but also on Good Friday morning, um, we basically act out um, what's happening. It begins in the schoolrooms, makes its way here. What we need is... Um, responsible adults that are willing to dress up for various parts. And there's a, a, Liz has put a sheet at the back there. So if you are willing to be dressed up, I mean, I don't think it requires anything much more than a dressing gown and a tea towel. Um, <laughs> but if you're willing to come and be part of our Good Friday morning event, which uh, Liz and Andy, who's preached for us this morning, are going to be leading and taking all the families and children through, it would be great to have uh, some of you coming to do that. So do put your name on that if you'll be willing to help with that. And of course, with all of this going on, uh, the key thing is we let people know. And um, uh, the cards to be delivered around uh, the whole of the parish, um, I think Liz is hoping to get them tomorrow, so they'll need bundling up, ready for, to go out into all the streets but then I think available on Tuesday for people to come and take packs and go for a walk. Um, I haven't checked the weather, but I'm sure it's going to be lovely. And uh, a great opportunity to walk the streets of the parish and pray for people as you're doing so, as you're walking up and down, um, just uh, as you go to each front door, just putting it through, just to pray for whoever lives in that home as you walk around. Um, so it's really important we let people know and invite people to join us in our celebrations of Easter coming up. So a number of things uh, there for you to uh, think about. All of which, of course, is because, as um, Liz said in her prayers, Easter is approaching. And so our final hymn 
really does take our attention uh, towards the cross and for all that Jesus has done for us there. So let's stand and sing this together. Do please be seated. Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you so much that our Lord Jesus came, uh, came in our place, that he died in our place and took the punishment that was due to us. Uh, that we, and we pray that we might never betray his love for us. Please take and use these gifts as we proclaim the wonder of now being able to know you as our Father. 
in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, do please stay for uh, tea and coffee at the end of our service and a closing prayer. Christ crucified, draw us to himself to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with us and those whom we love from this day forward and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.